Have you ever, at any given moment, thought you were going to die? Maybe you were five years old and it was the first time you got lost by your parents. Or maybe it was during a fight where the odds weren't necessarily in your favor. Well, in those moments, have you ever felt like you were faster, quicker, or even stronger without really knowing why? Hi, I'm Muhammad Abukish, and I believe that all those things tie up together to form the question, to what extent does fight or flight instincts influence our will to survive in near-death experiences? First of all, I'd like to talk about what fight or flight really is. It's our body's natural, primitive way to prepare us to either fight or flee from situations that could threaten our survival. When we're in a situation that we believe threatens our survival, we become stressful. Once this happens, the response begins. It happens in the part of our brain known as the hypothalamus. When it's stimulated, it begins nerve cell firing and chemical release. These are meant to prepare our body for either fighting or running. Some of the chemical fired are adrenaline, non-adrenaline, and cortisol. Adrenaline, we know, although the others we might not. Noradrenaline is a neurotransmitter. Its primary function is to increase heart rate, release excess glucose from its storage, and increase blood flow to skeletal muscles. Cortisol is classified as a steroid hormone. These hormones' primary functions are to increase blood sugar and aid in fat, protein, and carbohydrate metabolism. So all these things are happening in our body. On a general wider scope, here's what's happening. Our blood is directed to our muscles. Our pupils dilate. We become more aware. Our sight becomes sharper and we stop feeling pain. So all of these things help physically and psychologically prepare our body for fighting or fleeing. Although keep in mind that during the response, humans aren't necessarily suddenly gaining muscle or becoming as fast as Usain Bolt. How much faster you become is completely based on your personal potential. Now, let's focus less on the biological side and more on the cognitive side. Our perception completely changes. When in this mode of survival, we perceive everything as a threat. This is because we lose rationality as we're in this more primitive state. Our fear becomes exaggerated and we're suddenly very quick to jump to conclusions. We're in the simple state of shoot before asking. Our mind is primarily focused on short-term survival, and we lose any rationality in thinking of long-term survival or benefits. See, the fight-or-flight response seems like a very extreme situation, almost our body's last resort, if you will. Although it's not based on reality, it's based on perception. For example, this response could happen in the wrong situation, although because of your perception, your mind and body might believe that it's the right situation for the response. A team working at Zafire Labs had an unplanned case study that's purpose dealt with the fight or flight response. It was an experiment using a man whose age was not given. He was running with a machine that was measuring his heart rate, skin temperature, and breathing rate. About one hour into his run, a dog attacked the man. The dog's first bite was on his leg, causing him to trip, and for 90 seconds, the man was trying to survive the dog attack. During this 90 second period, the man's heart rate shot up by 20 beats per minute. Let's keep in mind that before this, he was running. His skin temperature increased by about 3 degrees and his breathing rate decreased. All of these reactions are due to the flight or flight response. His heart rate increased because of the noradrenaline that was getting pumped into his system. The skin temperature increase was due to the reduced blood flow to lower limbs and the increased peripheral blood flow. The breathing rate decreased just because he was in resting position from his running one. This shows the fight or flight response taking action when this man's life was being threatened. It influenced his will to survive. If this case study was done on purpose, it would most probably be considered unethical, for you're actually putting a human in potential harm. Although with that being said, data given by a human would help much more than data retrieved from an animal. This would connect more towards us. In Lawrenceville, Georgia, a man in his early 20s named Tony Cavallo was repairing a 1964 Chevrolet from underneath. During the process, the vehicle that was propped up fell on him. He fell unconscious. Tony's mother, Mrs. Angela Cavallo, came out to see her son under the car. By herself, she lifted the car high enough and long enough for the neighbors to reset the support to lift the car. It seems almost impossible that a woman or anyone could lift a 1.2 ton car. Although the answer to why this is possible 
is a fight or flight response. Though it wasn't her life that was in a near-death experience, it was her son's, and to a mother, his life could be more valuable than hers. The fight or flight response was initiated, and like I mentioned before, some chemicals were released into the bloodstream. The reason for what seems like an increase of strength would be because of the adrenaline and noradrenaline pumped, and the muscle contractions. So what seems like superhuman strength is just the potential that's released at the right time. I experienced a fight or flight response many times, but there was one time that truly stuck in my head. I was in a refugee camp in Lebanon, where my grandmother used to live. It's not really a dangerous place, but at the same time it's not all that safe. I was walking down the street trying to get from my cousin's house to my grandma's house, where my family was. I was in 6th grade and I was walking alone. There were a group of guys about 8th grade with bamboo sticks blocking the way. There was about 5 of them. They were saying, you can't pass. In Arabic, of course. I personally took this as a joke, laughed, and walked by anyway. Then, one of the guys swung his bamboo stick and smacked me in the face. I instantly ran. Without hesitation, without even thinking, I sprinted. I ran faster than I ever had, and for longer than I ever had. My grandmother's house was about 200 meters from where I was. They were hitting me on the back while I was running, and I got one hit to the back of my head, but I didn't feel any pain. I don't remember my thoughts exactly. I was lucky enough to make it back safely. This is a perfect example of the fight or flight response. In the matter of milliseconds while I was getting hit, the response initiated. The neurotransmitters and hormones that I spoke about earlier began releasing into my bloodstream and preparing me for either fight or flight. In my case, I fled. Personally, I felt that my life was threatened, and I believe that it could have been a near-death experience. And it was this response that saved my life. It truly influenced my will to survive. The fight or flight response can also connect to suicides. I'm sure some of you have heard that it's impossible to kill yourself by drowning yourself or by choking yourself. Well, the fact is that if you have complete control over yourself throughout the process of suicide, you just can't kill yourself. This sudden will to survive is due to the fight or flight response. Like I mentioned earlier, the response is very primitive. It bypasses one's rationale. Instinctively, humans want to live. It is a very primitive nature to survive. So even if you're committing suicide to save a country or something, though it seems that rationally thinking saving the life of many for the life of one is the right thing to do, when on the verge of death, this rationale will escape your mind. When the fight or flight kicks in, the only thing on your mind is survival. Another example is that if you're trying to commit suicide by jumping off a building, you'll never land head first. You'll always instinctively take a position that you think will ensure your survival, i.e. feet first or flat on the floor. So the fight or flight response affects your will to survive, even when you don't necessarily want to live. So the question arises once again, to what extent does the fight or flight instincts influence our will to survive in near-death experiences? Well, I believe that it's influenced our will to survive very strongly, both through the nerve cell firing and the chemical release. Although with that being said, I don't believe it influences us in a sense that we're suddenly stronger than we can ever be or that we're faster than our maximum potential. See, I believe the fight or flight response is just a tool to tap our own maximum potential when it's needed most, and in this case, to survive.